in this video we are going to be talking about isomerism what are isomers isomers are molecules of the same compound that differ in arrangement of their atoms so for example let's take pentane as a molecule you will see that and then let's also take 2 methyl butane as a molecule. You see that this one has one, two, three, four, five, five carbons. And this one also has one, two, three, four, five, five carbons. And then you see that let's try and show the protons on this pentane. And then we'll see whether they are isomers or not. So this is CH3, H and then H. And this is also CH3, H, H, and then H. So we see that it is C5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, H, 12. Now let's try and count the protons on this one too. This side, proton. There's one proton and there's another here. Then there is one proton here. There's another one here. This one is here, this one is here, this one is here, this one is here, this one is also here, and this is here, and this is here. So let's count this one too. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this one too is C5, H12. So you see that though these two molecules are different molecules, yet they are of the same compound. So this is the normal pentane. And then this is 2-methylbutane. So this implies that the normal pentane and 2-methylbutane are isomers. And specifically, these are constitutional isomers because they differ in their positions in terms of arrangement of atoms. Now, we also have functional group isomers. For example, if you consider this, these two molecules, you see that this is 2 propanone. So, this is 2 propanone. And then this is 2 propanal. So, you see that the only difference between the propanone and the propanal is that. Whereas here is a metal group, here is what a proton. So these are these two are called functional group isomers. Under the broad subject of isomers, so under the broad subject of isomers, I'm right it here. Under the broad subject of isomers, there are two major types of isomers. The first one is a constitutional isomer and th those ones normally differ in terms of their positions and then the second one is the stereo isomer then under the stereo isomer we also have two more isomers we have the enantiomers which we will later talk about and then we also have the diastereomers so enantiomers are isomers of the same compound that, that are mirror images of each other whereas diastereomers are isomers of the same compound that are not mirror images of each other so under the diastereomers we also have the conformers conformers and then we have the geometric isomers so these are the geometric isomers normally known as the cis and trans isomers they are geometric isomers so this is how the broad subject of isomers is broken down so we'll go through each of these isomerism to understand how isomers help chemists to make progress in their discoveries. So now let's talk about conformers. 
What are conformers? Conformers are different arrangements of atoms that are interconverted by rotation about single bonds. And these conformers nearly are usually drawn using the Newman projections. So for example, if we have this conformer, this is 2-chlorobutene. You will see that this 2-chlorobutene can also be drawn in this form. This is also 2-chlorobutene. However, you see that in this 2-chlorobutene, the chlorine is pointing up and in this one it is pointing down. These differences is what leads to the different isomers under the conformers. So now, what we just did was that we rotated this chlorine 180 degrees above this C2 carbon and this C3 carbon. So now, in order to draw Newman projections, what we we'll do is that we are going to fuse this carbon, first carbon and this second carbon together. The angle that is usually measured by the rotation above the C2 and C3 carbon is called the dihedral angle. So now, under Newman projections, we have the carbon atom that is in front and that is normally represented by the dark spot and then the carbon atom at the back is represented by the circle. So now, let's draw the Newman projections for ethane. So this is ethane. Ethane is CH3, CH3. CH3, CH3. So we have the eclipse conformer. And then we also have the staggered conformer. Under the staggered conformer, we have the anti conformer, and then we also have the Gauche conformer. So let's draw the Newman projections of ethane, and then let's look at the difference between the eclipse conformer and then the staggered conformer. So this is carbon one and carbon two. So let's assume that this is carbon one, the carbon in front, and then this is carbon two, the carbon at the back. So you see that the first carbon is attached to three protons, and then the second carbon is also attached to three protons. Anytime you see Newman projection of this form, then know that we are talking about the staggered conformer. However, we could also draw this in a different form by drawing it like this. So this is the carbon in front and this is the one at the back. So this ones are filled with three protons. So the carbon at the back is also filled with three protons. So you see that anytime you see Newman projections of this form, then we are talking about the eclipse conformer. Now, the difference between, there is an interesting thing about the staggered and eclipse conformer. The thing is that the eclipse conformer is less stable compared to the staggered conformer. And this is because in the eclipse conformer, we have the torsion strain, torsional strain, torsional strain. And torsional strain is when molecules resist turning about their axis. And then we also have the steric strain. And so steric strain is when two or a group of atoms are brought together and therefore there is increase in energy. And this increase in energy leads to the repelling of the electron-electron cloud within them. However, in the staggered conformer, we only talk about steric strain. There is no torsional strain 
that is observed in the staggered conformer. So because of this, it makes the staggered conformance most or the more stable. They are more stable compared to the eclipse conformance, which are least stable. Let's consider butane. Uh, let's draw all the Newman projections for butane using the C1 and then the C2 carbon. So you see that on the C1 carbon, there are two protons here. And then on the C2 carbon, so there are two protons here. And then this is a CH3. And then this is a CH3. So now let's draw all the Newman projections of this molecule above. So we are standing on this one. So this is the front carbon. So this is a proton, this is a proton. And then this is also a CH3. So let's put the CH3 here. And so the first thing will be this is also a CH3 for the carbon behind. And then this is a proton. And this is a proton. So this is a first conformer. And so the second conformer, you keep rotating it 60, 60 degrees. So we are going to rotate the second carbon 60 degrees. So if we rotate it 60 degrees, we are going to get this conformer. So yes, H, yes, H. Remember that this is the front carbon, this one. And then this is CH3. And then this is the back carbon. So since we've rotated the 60 degrees, it means that this proton will come here. And then this one, which was here, will come here. And then this metal group will come somewhere here, 60 degrees. So this is a CH3. The next thing we'll do is we will proceed to rotate it another 60 degrees again. So this is the front carbon. This is a proton, this is a proton. And then the top here is a CH3. And so we'll rotate it again, 60 degrees. So CH3 at the back carbon will come here. And then this proton will go here. So this proton is here. And then this proton will go to the top. So this proton is here, so H. Then now, let me continue from the down here. So we rotate it another 60 degrees again. When we do that, there will be CH3. This is a proton and this is a proton. And so when we rotate this, CH3 will come down here. So we have this CH3 here. And then this H will go here. H is here. And then this one will come to the top here. So H is here. Then aside this, so we've rotated the 60 degrees. Another 60 is 120. Another 60 is 180 degrees. Let's rotate it again. So this is 0 degrees, 60 degrees. Then plus 60, 120 degrees. And then plus another 60. So this is 180 degrees. So let's rotate it again. So this is the front carbon. So we have a C3 here. And then there are protons here. And then there is also a proton here. So if we rotate it another 360 degrees, you see that this CH3 will come here. So we have a CH3 here. And then this proton will go to the top. Then we have a proton here. And then this proton will come to this proton. So we have another proton here. So this is the 240 degrees rotation. So after rotating it like this, then we we'll rotate it one more time to give us the 300 degrees rotation. So this is a CH3, this is a proton, this is a proton, the carbon at the back. So this CH3 will go to the top here. So this is a CH3, and this proton will come here. 
so this proton come here and then this one will also come to the down here then this is proton two. so this is a 300 degrees rotation so you can see that 0 degrees 60 degrees 120 degrees 180 degrees 240 degrees 300 degrees if we had done another rotation we will end up with the 0 degrees so now you can see that there are some similar ones inside remember the question says that we should arrange this in increasing order of stability so you can see that this arrangement and this arrangement they are the same because we have a ch3 eclipsing a proton ch3 eclipsing a proton we have an h eclipsing a proton eclipsing a proton yes a proton eclipsing a proton and we have another c3 eclipsing a proton this is c3 eclipsing a proton so it means that this compound let's assume a is the same as this compound b so that means that 120 degrees and 240 degrees the potential of the molecule there are the same and let's also see if we would find another similarity so you see that this compound let's see this one too so let me say here's a this compound b is the same as this compound b because this is a staggered confirmation and we have two ch at the same side so we have this two h at the same side then we have four pr protons to at another side one two three four these four protons to at another side so these two will have the same energy so now in terms of ranking sketch the energy profile of this configuration before we go to the energy profile let's try and rank them so you see that this conformer is the most stable because it is an anti-conformer so this is the most stable conformer and then the least stable conformers are these conformers so you see that this is the most or the least most stable conformer so this is the least and then this is the most stable since it is least stable, it means that it has a higher potential energy than this one. And then from there, we'll come to this conformers. This is the next least stable, 120 and 240. And then from there, we'll come to 60 and 300. And then 180. So let's sketch the energy profile diagram for. This is the energy profile diagram for the conformers. So we have zero degrees here. We have 60 degrees and we have 120 degrees here and we have 180 degrees and here's a 240 degrees and then this is sorry 240 is here and then we have a 300 degrees here then we have back to zero degrees here or 360 a 360 degrees and then the zero degrees are the same so now, remember that we said that the least most stable conformer was the first one. Let's number the conformer so that we will understand which one is which. So let's say this is 1. And then this is 2. B is 2. So the 0 degrees is 1. 60 degrees is 2. So the 0 degrees is 1. 60 degrees is 2 and then 120 degrees is 3 and then 180 degrees is 4 but remember that the 240 degrees is the same as the 60 degrees so that one is sorry the 240 degrees is the same as the 120 degrees so that one is also 3 so this one is also 3 and then the 60 degrees is the same as the 300 degrees and therefore this one too is 2 so you see that the 0 degrees is 1 the 60 degrees is 2 but this 60 degrees is the same as the 300 degrees so 60 and 300 have the same potential energy 2 2 and then this conformer is 
three, and it has the same potential energy as the third, as the two forty degrees. So this one two is three, and then the anti conformer is four. So this is how the energy profile diagram will look. But remember that the important key is that zero degrees is one. So we have the first conformer here. And then this is 60 degrees and 300 degrees is 2. So that means here is 2. And then 300 degrees is also 2. And then the 180 degrees, the most stable conformer is 4. And then 120 degrees and 240 degrees are also the same. So 120 degrees is 3. And then 240 degrees is also 3. This is the energy profile diagram that shows the various conformers. The question says that draw all the Newman projection for all the conformers of one bromo two chloroethane and arrange the conformers in increasing order of stability. So let's draw the Newman projections. So the molecule is one bromo two chloroethane. So that means one bromo, this is a BR, and then two chloro. So this is how the molecule looks like. So this is C1 and then C2. So C1 has two protons, and then C2 also has two protons. So if we want to draw it, you see that if we use this to represent the carbon in front, and so you see that bromine is here, and these are the two protons. So the carbon at the back, it has a chlorine and two protons. So let's assume there is a chlorine here. And then the two protons are also here. So this is an eclipse conformer. And this is the least stable conformer. Then from here, we will do a 60 degrees rotation. So it's going to look like this. There's a proton here and then there's a proton here. And then this is a bromine. And then the carbon 2, the chlorine will come here since it's a 60 degrees rotation. A proton comes here and then a proton goes there. And then the last one will look like this. So this is the carbon in front. So let me draw that one here. So this is the carbon in front. And this is a carbon at the back. We have a bromine that is bonded to two protons. And then the one at the back is a chlorine. So if we rotate it further, the chlorine comes here. And then a proton goes there. And then this proton comes here. Then we can do another rotation again. So bromine, proton, and then there's also a proton here. And then this is the carbon at the back. So if we do a further rotation, the chlorine comes here. This proton goes here. And then this proton comes here. And we can further rotate again. So when we rotate, let me draw that one other down here. So if we do another rotation. So bromine is here, and so bonded to two protons, and the carbon at the back is a chlorine. So if we rotate, this chlorine comes here, and then this proton goes here, and this proton comes here. And the last one we can do is to rotate it again, 60 degrees. So if we rotate it, here's a bromo group, and then this is a proton, this is a proton, and the carbon at the back. This is a bromo group, this is a chlorine, chlorine group. And then, let me write it all, this is a chlorine. And then this proton will come here, so this proton will be here. This one will go there, so this proton will be here. So these are all the Newman projections of one bromo, two chloroethane. However, the next task is to arrange them in increasing order of stability. So now, 
let's see you can see that there are some similar conformers inside so you can see that for example if this is a this conformer is similar to this conformer b and also you can see that this conformer b is similar to this conformer so at the end of the day we will treat them as one conformer and we treat so this is a a and then b b so we treat a and a as a, the same conformer and then b and b as the same conformer so now you see that this is an anti conformer it is anti because the most bulky group are opposite each other so the most bulky group on the first carbon is a bromine and the most bulky group on the second carbon is a chlorine if the two most bulky groups on the two carbons are now opposite each other and you have an anti conformer and this anti conformer is the least stable but you see this is an eclipse conformer and in this eclipse conformer the most bulky group are just beside each other so this is the least stable conformer so now having identified these two we can see that we've already established that staggered conformers are more stable than eclipse conformers and for therefore con concerning these two then this one is more is less stable than this conformer and for that matter this conformer will have a higher potential energy than this conformer so let's arrange them in increasing order of stability so the most stable is the anti conformer and for that reason that conformer will come last so the least stable conformer is this conformer and therefore it will come first so this conformer will come first first conformer so there is a chloro group here proton and then proton then the next stable conformer is this conformer remember we said that eclipse conformers are very less stable so this one is less than in terms of stability it's less than this conformer so this is a bromine group this is a proton this is a proton and then this is a proton this is a proton and then this is a chlorine so this conformer is more stable than this and then from there we'll come to the next stable conformer is this target conformer which is a gauche this is a gauche conformer the anti conformer is more stable than a gauche conformer so let's draw this gauche conformer so we have a bromo group have one in front and this one is the one at the back so we draw this staggered conformer there's a proton here there is a proton here and then there are two protons here so this is a staggered conformer and then now the most stable conformer is the anti conformer but since it will not enter here then i will draw it down here so this is the most stable conformer anti conformer so these are protons so this one is a proton and then this is also a proton and this is also a proton so these are the most stable in terms of increasing order of stability 